So th this is a laboratory prototype of, of an electronic nose that we've been developing. Um, on the back, yeah, on the back of this, we have a little housing that has a fan. There's a sensor cartridge. So each of these little panels have um, different sensing materials on them. So down the middle of this cartridge is a air channel and the air is drawn through here by this fan. When we turn the fan on, now air is being drawn through that sensor cartridge in one direction. The beginning naive idea was, you know, let's try a biopolymer. And this, since we're surrounded by DNA here, people have freezers full of the stuff. And so our first experiments were to take DNA mixed with a dye and dry it down on a surface and then blow odors at it and watch for the color change. And so that was the very first experiment. And, then, and we were surprised to, to see that there was a response to odors. The key here is that the DNA that we're in the context that we're using it is not in the context that one normally thinks of DNA related to how it functions in the body. This is thinking of it as a off-the-shelf molecule, so to speak. It's like, I think of it as like a, a spaghetti noodle. And even though you put, put your spaghetti noodle down on your table, it, it will wiggle around if you move on, if you poke on it. So the idea is that our substrate is covered by these spaghetti noodles. And when the odor comes in, they all wiggle a little bit in certain ways. And that affects the dye, which changes its color. And what happens when the odor comes in is that it disrupts this interaction to a greater or lesser degree, depending on the sequence, and that leads to a change in the dye. Different pieces of DNA, different sequences of DNA show different responses. So that was the next observation, is that if you change the sequence, the ATGC -A sequence of even short pieces of DNA, that you could then make a different sensor. So the spaghetti noodles are on these, this silk screen. So from the spaghetti noodle standpoint, we can't see the noodles, but we can see the color associated with the noodles. And so when you stain DNA with a dye and put it on um, a substrate, um, it tends to look pink like these. Inside this yellow box are a set of electronics that are used to interrogate the color changes of the sensors that we talked about. And we've simplified this so that this device knows about ammonia. And I haven't labeled these jars so that I could get the, the, get the device to tell me which of these jars contain the ammonia. So the screen tells you ammonia, the light goes off, it's flashing, so that's ammonia. is that Joel's idea here changes one's thinking about, in, in a generic way, about DNA. And that's always a big deal in science because we, we tend to um, focus on things that we think we're beginning to understand. And when we do that, we, tend, we as scientists, tend to put on blinders. And it's very difficult to take off those blinders. So it's great fun. It's great fun.